Hello and welcome to Reverie Knight's Tactics. If you'd like to take a look at the game, there is a link in the description and this video is kindly sponsored by Catapult. Now, Reverie Knight's Tactics is a tactical turn-based strategy RPG and as you may or may not tell, this is completely hand-drawn. Every single thing in the game is completely hand-drawn and there are decision uh, decision making processes in the game that are going to affect how other characters treat your character overall so for example if you are brash and aggressive then people are going to either see you as foolish or brave or they're going to be scared of you or you know something along those lines and the same thing with the other side of the coin where if you're playing a little bit more level-headed, a little bit calmer, then people are going to think maybe you're weak or maybe you're very intelligent or something along those lines. And I've been playing a little bit of this just to kind of get the hang of things. And I got to say, I very much like it. It, it feels um, very much sort of Fire Emblem-esque, but... I'm gonna leave that up to you. I'm gonna leave that up to you. So let's just take a look here. Start the game and you can play with normal mode or you can play with story mode. Personally, I really like games that provide you this option because sometimes, sometimes you don't really care about the combat that much. Yeah, sure, you wanna participate in the combat. You don't wanna, you know, completely skip it or anything like that. But personally, I, in some cases, just want to experience the story, and I don't really care whether the fights are challenging or not. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to be playing in normal mode. In my off-screen time, I would probably be playing story mode because I literally just want to find out what happens to these extremely intriguing characters. Anyway, normal mode it is. There we go. Let's do this. Lenorian. The glorious elven city, founded on the continent of Lamnor. A booming civilization, and a bastion of all forms of culture. But such wonder would not be built without sacrifices, be it from those that built it, or those that were here before, and were removed through force, both physical and arcane. Expelled, the goblinoid people kept themselves at bay. The memory of what they had lost burned as vividly as the wounds on their bodies and souls. Isolated, they planned, and the day of their return drew closer without suspicion. The endless war lasted generations. Maybe it was all decided by the surprise kidnapping of Princess Tanya. When the attack came, no one was prepared. Taken by goblinoids, the beautiful city was corrupted and twisted into a different version of itself. Rarnak, the city of hobgoblins. We from the Order of Tanato, guardians of knowledge, could not sit idly by. The mandate that authorized the expedition of clerics to register the remaining elven knowledge was signed by these hands. But we haven't heard from them since.
All right, so after that small prologue introduction, we are now going to be introduced to the combat mechanics. Now, I don't know whether you can see this, but look at all of the hand-drawn environment and the, the characters here, and even, I mean, you can see from the animations that it's very much hand-drawn, and I don't know about you, but I personally find that extremely attractive. I think it looks really good. But in a, in a sort of strange way, you know, it has a, an allure that you wouldn't otherwise know about or see in other graphic styles. Very much like that. Anyway. Okay, let's have, let's have a look here. This guy says, I told you they'd have regrouped. This is your fault. We had to get them into the palace somehow. And now we'll never leave. I should never have trusted you. From the moment I saw you, I knew you were an insolent... Guys, please, we have to work together. We are already dead. Your friend doomed us all. If that's what you think, fine. But we have to deal with them anyway. All right, welcome to the battle tutorial. Battles are divided into a setup phase and a battle phase. During the setup phase, you can change your unit starting positions however you like. For now, select the highlighted tile to place Aurora on it. Aurora is the main character in this game and the one that you're going to be starting off with, but obviously you're going to be able to expand your party as time goes on. Anyway, let's place her there. Once your units are positioned, press the start battle button to initiate the battle phase. Let's do it. All right, here we go. The battle phase is divided into player turns and enemy turns. In most battles, the first turn is yours. However, enemies can ambush you, preventing you from positioning your units and acting before their first turn. During each team's turn, all units in the team can act before the units of the opposite team. Units spend action points to perform actions, such as moving, attacking, using items, and guarding. When a unit spends all of its action points, it cannot act again until its next turn. For now, let's move Aurora to the highlighted tile. Select the highlighted tile twice to confirm your movement. I actually very much like the way that they've done the movement in this game as well, because usually how it goes is one mouse key, uh, well, I was going to say key, but yeah, it's, it's more of a button, right? Yeah, so anyway, point is one of the mouse buttons is move and one of the mouse buttons is something like confirm or whatever. And I find that kind of a little bit finicky sometimes. So it's really nice to know that basically all I have to do is just uh, look, there's even a visual, you know, confirmation of your action there, which I very much appreciate. And I like the fact that it is basically just one button. Anyway, notice the action point icons above the skill. One is empty and the other is full. You can always use skills with one action point, but certain skills will consume two action points if available, generating greater effects. Select the available skill and attack the highlighted enemy. All right, so here's the thing about that. I personally really like that system as well because that basically makes it so that you have a bit more of an opportunity to decide what you want to do. You're not limited by your skills being one action point or even two action points because most of your skills can be enhanced in some way if you use more action points but then as a result of that you're maybe restricting your mobility a little bit because obviously you're not going to be able to move then because action points are used to enhance the skill initially and then you're going to be using them all up in that attack so it's more of a i feel like it's more tactical than most anyway let's see here this is called Frost Spear. As you can see, it deals 15 damage to an enemy up to five tiles away, freezing them for one turn. So let's use it against this Hobgoblin Archer. You know, personally, I think I think we might have some issues here, to be, to be fair. Anyway, let's do it. Oh, you know, I really love the animations. Okay, when a unit finishes its actions, you can avoid being backstabbed by choosing its facing direction. So you can see here these little arrows around Aurora right now, and you can see that we can place her this way, or we can place her any of the other three directions. I'm gonna be placing her towards the front, because I'm pretty sure this bugbear up to the top there is someone that we kind of want to avoid for the most part. I think he's probably going to be very difficult to eliminate. I think he has a lot of HP. So we're going to just face forward here. Remember to use all your units to defeat the enemies. You can end your turn early by pressing the end turn button. Good luck. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm not very confident about winning this, to be honest. So I'm... Uh, <laughs> I'm probably not going to win, let's face it. 
probably not going to win this, but I'm going to try and we'll see what happens. So I'm basically just going to take Brigandine all the way over here. And we're going to have her face the archer. And then we'll take Fren over here as well. But we're going to have to be a little bit careful about this. You can see here that they have a wide variety of different abilities as well. For example, um, this is a one cost ability and also this is a one cost ability. So you can see here, friend dashes to any tile in a line, increasing his finesse by two for three turns. Which is actually really cool because look at this, I can literally dash all the way over here. Which is actually a super far distance away, look at that. Pretty amazing, right? So then what, what I can do is I could potentially move like so. And I can move this way. And then we're going to be facing this guy. And then we're basically going to prevent him from attempting to backstab Brigandine. Or at least that's the idea. Now this guy's going to fire off an arrow. And uh, that I think is a uh, turn delayed ability. So he's basically going to just uh, do damage next turn or something along those lines. Potentially. I'm not entirely sure just yet. But yeah, you can see that we're now getting attacked uh, from a variety of different places. This guy, as you can see, look at his might at the moment. His might is insane. Look at that. 13 down in the bottom right if you can't see the stats of this guy. He has 13 might, 70 HP. Pretty sure he's going to absolutely murder us if he gets into range because Brigandine has 9 might and Fren has 10, so you can obviously tell that the bugbear is pretty strong. So anyway, I'm gonna move over here with Aurora, and I actually want to, I mean, I would like to be able to heal someone, but I really actually want to try and slow the opponent, and I'm hopefully talking about slowing this guy. I'm gonna try and slow, should I try and slow that guy, or should I just try and deal damage? Maybe I should just try and deal damage, actually. The Hobgoblin Priest might be an idea. Let's do that. Okay, so let's do a little bit of damage. I'm hopeful that maybe we can do something so that we can prevent um, the, the bugbear from actually attacking us really badly, but I, I don't know how that's gonna go. Anyway, let's move over here, I guess. I'm going to take Brigandine and attempt to continue harassing the Hobgoblin Archer. Let's go for a nice... Oh, I don't want to go for the Shield Bash. Pushing them back is not a good idea. Ah... Uh... Oh, none of this is actually good, to be honest. Okay, I'm going to use Round Slam, I suppose. There we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to charge into him next turn. If he remains in the same place, then we're going to charge into him. Greater Pulling Strike is actually pretty cool. I just hit my hand on my desk. That's fantastic. That did not hurt. I know. Anyway, deals 15 damage to enemies in a line. Hopefully this is going to hurt. I, yeah, I don't know whether we should go for that or whether we should go for something else. Because here's the thing. Quick Attack is not very good, in my opinion. Although, the Hobgoblin Priest does only have two defense. So, it is less likely for that to happen. Ooh, bleeding! Oh yes, I like bleeding attacks. So, let's use a bleed attack. There we go. That was some nice damage. And a critical. And a critical, no less. Very nice. Okay, so let's face towards him once again. And let's see what this guy is going to do. Oh, that was the fellow's arrow. Did you see that? The arrow actually hit the ground over there. That was really bad. That really did not do anything. This guy is now using a special focus ability. Don't know whether you've noticed the little focus bar underneath the health and the mana bars. They provide, um, or should we say the focus bar provides access to special abilities that can only be used with a certain amount. Usually you need about 50 to be able to access those initially. So that's good to know anyway. And now the bugbear is having some problems. He, I mean, he's, he's right there. <laughs> he's right there. So we're going to have to do something about that. Ooh, can I not move? It doesn't look like I can move. I actually wonder whether that is because he's right next to me. That might be the case, or it might just be that I need to use something else like Greater Polar Circle or something like that, because you can see here, this pushes them back one tile and also freezes them a little bit. That might be something that could help us, because as you can see, I can't actually move away uh, from him. So I'm going to use this. Boom. Did that move him? No, it doesn't seem to want to move him because I think he is just immovable. I think that's the main problem. Oh, it, it seems like we actually, um, it seems like we, we cannot move. I think we have been afflicted by some, yes, indeed. Look at that. 
We have been afflicted by Restrain, which is the Hobgoblin Priest. He used his focus points to be able to afflict us with this, which is actually really bad. Okay, um, removes all neg- ah, negative status effects. Okay, this is fantastic. I will remove it from Fren, I guess. And maybe from, uh, yeah, we don't have any more mana with her, unfortunately, so the only thing I can do is do Shield Bash, and I am still obviously not going to be able to do anything with her, so we're going to have to switch to Friend here, and I guess another Greater Slash in is in order. But this other guy is also going to be able to heal, which is really bad. So I don't, I don't think we're going to survive for very much longer, but I'm, I'm trying my best, you know. I mean, as I said, the battle system, if you're not playing in story mode, is a little bit more punishing than you would otherwise see from the other one, from the other difficulty. But I don't know whether you're even meant to win this fight. That's the thing. Wow. Look at that damage. 23 damage from that fellow. You know, I probably should have just gone after the uh, got, gone after the Hobgoblin Mage. I think, look at him, he's got one defense. I think I'd probably be able to completely murder him, to be fair. Nice damage. And I am going to just face there. Should I just... Oh, I really want to go after him, to be honest. Oh, I was hoping for a critical right there, too. Oh, well, never mind. Think I'm probably done. Aurora, can you actually do anything? No, it seems like she's stunned, unfortunately. Yeah, seems like we are uh, we are pretty much done right now. I mean, maybe I can at least kill one of them. <laughs> but no. Oh, that was a backstab and a half as well. Oh, look at this guy. Yep, the bugbear with his massive hammer. I love the... Uh, do you see that animation? Do you see he twirled his massive war hammer in his hands before he slammed down on friend right there? That was some... Oh, that's some really nice attention to detail. Okay, so I'm actually going to move over here. And we are literally just going to try and kill the Hobgoblin Priest, who we should have probably just um, avoided to begin with, and basically just uh, just gone after the mage. That that was my main um, my main problem there. Or I should have gone after the Hobgoblin Archer. I mean, generally, I think the mage was the main problem because he actually healed the Hobgoblin Priest. The priest would have been dead, far far away, gone, and just completely eliminated from the action. But unfortunately, nope, doesn't seem to have happened, but there you go. That is indeed a victory for the Hobgoblins, but are they real? This, is, this a, is this reality? It doesn't have to end like this. We can change destiny. Father? Aurora, I must speak with you. Meet me at the library. Come in, child. Now let me just very quickly draw your attention to how colorful this scene is and how many details there actually are strewn about the library. You see this? You see all these details right now? I am literally blown away by the art style of this game. And I know, I know, I'm going on about it a little bit, but it is, it's very true in my opinion. I think it's, I think it's fantastic. Anyway, Light of Tanato, Aurora. Light of Tanato, your eminence? I sense that you are troubled, child. Is something the matter? Helleron, I... I had the strangest dream. Father was talking to me, but everything was blurry. I don't remember exactly what I saw. Things got bad. I was angry and scared. It felt horrible. Perhaps your father's voyage still troubles you. Perhaps. Have we heard any news from the Ranak expedition? Is that why I have been summoned? Alas, no. We have not heard a whisper of news from them in the past three months. Even my psychic connection to Marius has gone silent. Father. And now, this is the first of many dialogue options that we are going to have access to, but I don't know whether these ones actually affect I'm pretty sure they don't because there's no icon. You'll see later on in the uh, dialogue choices. 
what I'm talking about, about the icon, because there's a, a like a chaos slash order icon on the screen when it actually affects Aurora's alignment. But I think we're gonna try and steer towards the order side of things. So we're gonna say, we have no choice but to rescue them. This one expected no other response from you. The order will never abandon our companions. We must not ignore the possibility that they are alive and well. However, this one must point out that we must steel ourselves for the worst possible outcome. The ruthless goblin forces that stormed the elven city of Lenorian are not known for their diplomacy or mercy, after all. We must remember that no matter the depth of the tragedy, every scrap of knowledge they acquired must be recovered. Okay, I'm going to say Tanato shall guide us. She will, as she always has. So you'll send someone to rescue them or retrieve their bodies? Indeed, to recover their memories, whatever knowledge they acquired, and to give them a proper send-off. This one came to realize that whatever it thought best for you wouldn't really matter. Not this time. Of course I'd hear your counsel, I'll say. This one knows you would hear. It is not so sure you would listen. So this one deemed it in everyone's best interest to make it official, and that is why this one has chosen to send you on a new expedition. You, Aurora, will cross the sea to the southern continent of Lamnor, towards Rarnak, ruin of Lenorian. My deepest gratitude, your eminence, I will not let you down. It was not an easy decision to make, please keep that in mind. How's this expedition going to work? I imagine we're not walking up to the main gates. We're definitely not. No, we have acquired a new liaison in the Mervalar forest. They will guide you through the forest and sneak you inside Rarnak. This one has decided that a smaller team will have a better chance of successfully locating the previous expedition. The goblins have proven more truculent and less trustworthy than we assumed. Best to not draw their attention. You're sending her alone? Oh boy. Don't oh boy me, Rora. I heard it all. Going to the Feral Kingdom by yourself? This is dangerous. I know it is, but it must be done. Yeah, because you have to rescue Marius. I get that. You know what must be done, Helleron. Send me with her. I'm a capable knight, you know that. Indeed you are, Miss Brigandine. However, this one is prioritizing finesse in this mission. I can learn finesse. I snuck my way in here and you didn't even notice. This one noticed. You dropped precisely three books and five scrolls since you came in. Well, you're wrong. It was six books. Oh. We must, unfortunately, prioritize things other than friendship for this mission. The mission. I will bring them back. This one trusts your abilities, and you, you would be wise to do the same. Yes, thank you, your eminence. Tomorrow you will depart for the port city of Varan, where you will meet Captain Halerius. You really are going, huh, Aurora? Let's at least have a farewell party. I can get us a nice discount at the Toothless Werewolf. Remember, Aurora, this will be dangerous. This one advises you to prepare as much as possible. Mind and body. Oh, shut it, Helleron. You're going to regret not unwinding now that you have the chance, Aurora. Please, one last party. Okay, so here we go. This is the icon I was talking about. I really lo I, I, I love the design of this one as well. I don't know why, but every single thing in this game is really aesthetic to me. I don't know. Anyway, two options. One is a chaos option, obviously the, the whole partying thing, and one is an order option, which is studying and preparing for the journey. Personally, I am gonna go for the study and prepare for the journey, but if you play the game, you can obviously decide whatever you want. And this is going to, I, I, I would assume they're going to give me some tutorial messages that will give me an idea as to you know what's going on with this. Anyway, study and prepare for the journey. I must prepare as much as I can, Brigandine. No time for partying. Oh, your seriousness is rubbing off on her, Helleron. Promise me you will come back. We'll celebrate your return then. 
It's a promise. You made your first decision. In this game, you'll need to make choices that will affect your gameplay experience. Whenever you see the symbol above, it means your decision will influence Aurora's chaos and order. It will affect the storyline and the way characters interact with her. Order. Smart, strategic decisions will influence the order side, and characters may trust Aurora more or think she's weak. Chaos. Harsh, dangerous decisions will influence the chaos side, and characters may consider Aurora brave or even stupid. Decisions also include the way you talk to characters in key moments and will affect your alignment, so be aware of that. The balance of chaos and order can be seen in the customization menu. There are no right or wrong answers ahead of you. Trust your instincts and make the best of every situation. This one shall make the final preparations for your journey. Take this as a parting gift. And we have now received the Scroll of Invisibility against Undead. A scroll? Invisibility against the undead? This one has calculated such an item will be of great use in Lamnor. They are rare, so use it wisely. And may the light of Tanato guide you, Aurora. Today, I'll sail for Lamnor. Destination Ranak, the city of hobgoblins. To rescue Marius. Father, were it not for you, where would I be today? Would I even be alive now? Would I have made my way into the Order by myself, or... To dwell on it would be a waste of energy. I owe you so much, Father. This is my chance to repay you. For this, I had to prepare myself. What are hobgoblins, goblins, and bugbears like? I will certainly encounter them on my journey. How do they behave? What do they act like? Will I have to fight them? What is the feral continent like? What dangers await us before we even set foot in the city? So many questions, so many things to remember. And still, here, I can be honest. All this preparation takes my mind away from what I fear of finding there. kingdom is no longer visible behind us. Everything I know is being left behind, with only the promise of Lamnor before us. I know not what is waiting there for us, for me, but I will face it head on. This is my duty, as a scholar, as a daughter, as who I am and who I will be. And once again, we are greeted by an overwhelmingly colorful scene, which, again, I really do adore. Anyway, Aurora says, So this is it. Lamnor. Feels good to have solid ground beneath my feet again. It won't feel so good when you meet the creatures that prowl about this same ground, girl. Charming as usual, huh, Captain? Manners don't help when ordering the men around, so don't expect niceties from me. Look, we've got our hands full preparing the camp and looking for some extra food, so I can't spare any men to accompany you. Got to ensure everything will be in tippy-top shape round here. This place right here will be our headquarters during our stay on this lovely continent. We've got a scribe to chronicle everything, and we've even got a cook. Fancy stuff. Whoever's going to guide you through the forest, you have to go meet them on your own. Well, fine. Huh, I like that attitude. Let's see how long it lasts. Oh, and do try to keep an eye out for any beasties, eh? We need to make sure the area is secure. In fact, here's a request for you, Commander. Go outside and make sure the immediate area is safe. Me? Alone? 
Why well, yes, the cook and scribe are setting up their tents and they certainly cannot fight. The sailors are too busy setting up the camp which will be our main base of operations. As for me, well, I have to oversee everything, so it falls to you, our powerful mage commander, to guarantee our safety. Or else we might end up being some beasties lunch before long. You never know in Lamnor. Have fun. I'll take monsters over having to listen to that guy any day. And so we set off by ourselves, and we are now greeted by the, uh, shall we say, world map of sorts. And this is where you get to customize your various characters as well. So you can see here, we have glance chance, critical chance, status resistances. We have equipment that we can potentially, uh, well, equip here. We have skills that we can equip as well, and you can take a look at the variety of skills that you have unlocked. We are un unfortunately only have Ice Ball at the moment, but Ice Ball is actually pretty cool, and it does some, some decent damage, and it also freezes the opponent. Freeze is something very cool because it removes one action point from an opponent when you use it against them. We also have a number of potions and uh, ether as well, which restores mana, health points, and so on. And we also have the scroll that Helleron gave us, of course. Otherwise, you have a glossary, which gives you a lowdown of all the various characters that you have so far met. You also have places and a bestiary. Obviously, the bestiary is not going to be used just yet, because we haven't encountered any enemies and otherwise you have the guides here as well for all the tutorial messages and all that stuff anyway let's move on this is the Nalur naluran forest one of the largest on this continent i'm supposed to rendezvous with my guide by moving along the river but how deep in the forest is this person and as captain hilarious mentioned monsters could be nearby i should move along quickly before any hostile creature approaches I think it might be too late. Just like these, yes. <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed. Okay, so yeah, set up our forces. I don't, I'm not going to set up anything. There's no real need. Because there are two quests here that we can do. You're going to gain experience for these. I actually don't know how much experience you need to level up in this game. So I could be, um, you know, just... I, I don't know, I, I, I don't really care too much about not taking any damage, but I do care about uh, attacking enemy five tiles away, so I'm going to try and complete that almost immediately. Boom, there we go, so that was a nice hit. And now, what's really cool about this is because we've used Ice Ball, you can see, look at that, his action point literally just disappeared, so now all he can do is basically just move four spaces away, and in my opinion, that's super nice. So, otherwise, what we're going to do is uh, technically I can then do the same thing so I can basically use greater ice ball here so I'm going to use that and look at that damage that was amazing damage right there and he's not actually going to be able to attack me from that distance as far as I'm aware I think he can only move oh no he can attack me from that distance okay I had no idea I mean that's the point I had no idea about that so what we're going to do is we're just going to move closer to him because I'm going to use my ice bands attack Hopefully that's going to eliminate him. And there you go. That was an easy, easy victory. Not too bad. But unfortunately, we were not able to complete all of the objectives. But I'm not really caring about that too much. As you can see here, if you continue, you will not be able to replay this battle. So if you want to go for the perfect, or should we say the perfection victory, then you should probably replay that if you want to. As you can see, there's a retry, retry battle button right down there but I'm just gonna continue on. Okay, so we gained 10 experience. Okay, so I actually do need 100 experience to be able to get to level two, and I would have gained 10 additional experience from not taking damage, so we would almost be at 50%, which I, I think is actually pretty good. I, you know, I think that's a, a pretty nice little bonus of experience. So technically we could have increased our experience gain by 100% pretty much, because we would normally gain 20 experience if I hadn't completed either objective. So. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. So if I wanted to, I could definitely do that. Anyway. Phew, that was uh, quite something. Fighting outside the confines of the temple is rather disturbing, I must say. What's this? Something emanated from those creatures. I can feel it in my mind. If I am not mistaken, this essence is known as Cogni. I must admit, I know little about it. Perhaps the scribe back at camp knows more. No sense in wasting any more time around here. I should... 
Oh no, surrounded. Remember, discipline beats numbers. Every time, discipline beats numbers. Aurora, where are you? You have a strange sense of humor, my goddess. <laughs> okay, there she is. There you are, Aurora. I thought I'd lost you in this forest. What are you doing here? Looking for you, duh. But never mind that, take this. Okay, wait, look at that, we've got a muffin which fully restores health and mana. <laughs> That's fantastic. What the, a muffin? Don't argue, eat it. Ugh, fine. Okay, there we go, party's health and mana restored. That felt excellent. Now let's get rid of these monsters. With Brigandine joining Aurora, they can perform team attacks, powerful skills that deal extra damage and cause a variety of different effects. To perform a team attack, two or more units need to be near the same enemy target and be able to perform an action, having at least one action point each. You can deselect the team attack option by toggling the basic attack skill or with the displayed controller button, if you're using a controller, of course. Using a team attack will consume all action points of the active unit and one action point from other units. Certain skills can push or pull units, creating different opportunities in combat. Pushing or pulling a unit against another will deal half damage to any enemy or obstacle that blocks its path. So in other words, you can use environmental attacks as well. It can also be used to force units to trigger tile effects. Yeah, that's exactly what I just said. Environmental attacks. I, uh, keep in mind that these tile effects can only be triggered once. All right, so th that's actually looking pretty fun because there are some vines in the uh, in the center here, which is actually really nice. And look at this. We are gaining a super uh, large amount of cogni right here, or cogni, however you want to say it. And uh, yes, Aurora must survive. Well, yeah, that's going to be uh, that's going to be a bit of a given, isn't it? Okay, so I can't actually. Um, push anyone here. The only only person that I can... You know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to just move Brigandine all the way over here. And then we are just going to face her this way. And then we're literally just going to attack that Skalar so that it doesn't move that fast. Actually, should I attack this one nearby? I don't know, you see. This is the, this is the problem. Because this guy is going to be able to get to us really, really quickly. This one is going to get to us no matter what. So I think I'm actually just going to attack this one from far away. And then we'll see what we can do. I'm going to face Aurora this way, just in case one of these gets to her. This one is going to obviously want to attack Brigandine, I assume. There we go. Nice. That was literally no damage whatsoever. That's really, really good. And we want to perform a team attack. So we're probably going to try and do that. Okay, so let's move Aurora over here. Can we do a team attack right now? Can I do a team attack right here? Uh, I'm actually not sure. I don't think so. I think I'm going to have to go this way. Taunt. Oh, now that's amazing. That's a, that's a very cool ability. Okay, so I actually can't do anything right now, so I'm going to have to use Ice Ball on this guy. Nice. He's almost dead. That is really, really good. And I'm going to use Shield Bash just to Shield Bash that. Oh, yeah, that was actually not good. Yeah, that was not good at all. I probably should have moved the other way so I could push him somewhere else. Now he's going to get a, a free backstab attack on Aurora right there, which is obviously my fault. But maybe... Oh, look at that guy. He literally ran onto the... <laughs> that was hilarious. He literally ran onto the vines himself. I didn't even need to do anything. That was kind of amusing. Okay, so let's actually just move over here. Maybe we can do a team attack now. Yes, we can. There we go. There's a nice little team attack. Boom. Here we go. Oh, no, that was nice. And we also got the other the other thing because I forced the uh, enemy onto the tile effect. That is really cool. Okay, so now Aurora has one action point remaining because obviously I used Brigandine to initiate the team attack. And so I can now use this to basically make it so that the Dogblin, <laughs> which I think is a... That's a pretty funny name, uh, is uh, hopefully going to be not able to reach us this turn. Ah... It, oh, oh, it was able to reach us, but not able to attack. That's pretty cool. I can actually use absolute zero right now if I want to, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think what I'm actually going to try to do is I'm going to move Aurora back. And then we'll move Brigandine over here. 
and then we can push back a little bit. That's obviously not really going to do much. Okay, that's that's innovative. That was very innovative, wasn't it? Okay, well, it's pretty good that um, this this uh, uh, what is it? Dogblin did not move forward because now what we're going to be able to do is literally just move forward and then just bash it onto the vines. Oh, actually, never mind. We just had a critical. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was easy enough then. That was fantastic. Yeah. So now you can see how much better the game gets when you get more party members, and that is just going to be exponentially increased as time goes on, which I'm very much looking forward to. So. Let's continue onward. Yes, let's continue. We get a sharp tusk. We gain a bunch of experience. We get a berry as well. And look at that, all the uh, the cogni that we're getting there. And Aurora has now advanced to level two. Aurora has gained a level and can lock, uh, unlock a new skill. As a character's level increases, new skills become available for them to learn. Any skill not selected can still be chosen at a later level. Skills can be equipped in the customization menu. Okay, so let's have a look. So we have the ability to choose between Ice Wall or Mystic Fog. Uh, ice Wall creates an ice block with eight health points on an empty tile up to five tiles away, chilling nearby units for one turn when destroyed. Okay, so in other words, you can create... Mm, you can create like a blockade of sorts and... Mm, I'm not entirely sure I agree with this, but you can kind of force enemies to step onto environmental traps and things like that. For example, the vines that we've seen. Personally, I much prefer Mystic Fog because swapping places with a unit up to eight tiles away, I think the possibilities of that are much greater. But that's not to say that Ice Wall isn't good, but I'm going to take Mystic Fog this time around. The customization screen allows you to manage the different units in your party. You can see the current character status is here. You can change the unit by clicking the top left arrows or using the controller's shoulder buttons if you're using a controller. You can check your inventory and use healing items in the items panel. As your character grows in level, they gain attribute points that can be spent to improve their power. Each unit can have up to three different items equipped at any one time, and each unit can have up to three different skills equipped for battle. So you can see here we have Mystic. Uh, Mystic Fog now as well, which is pretty nice. Okay, so I have one point available, and what do we uh, what what can we what can we spec into? Okay, so obviously this is Might. Might represents how much damage a unit's attack deals, as well as the power of certain skills. Finesse determines the power of certain skills, increases the chances of dealing critical damage and receiving glancing attacks. And defense reduces the amount of damage a unit receives from attacks and increases its resistance to negative status effects. I'm going to go for another point in finesse because she is a she is a finesse based character, and um, yeah, I think that's I think that's going to be pretty fun. A brigandine obviously hasn't leveled up at all. You can see here that she's really good with might, so I'm very much looking forward to getting her. Um, you know, getting her leveled up uh, relatively soon. As you can see, she's only 10 experience away, and uh, Aurora is full HP. Brigandine is not, so we're going to eat a berry with her. Going to eat two berries with her, and there you go. Take that, the ghosts of Tenebra were no match for us. All right, first, those weren't ghosts, but scholars. They originate in places where great suffering has occurred. They're formed by necromantic energy, animating deformed skulls and spines that can't form skeletons. Are you really lecturing me on ghost biology now? Why, yes, because it's important for you to understand your foes and allies, which leads me back to my previous point. What are you doing here? Helping you. I couldn't just let my best friend go to Lamnor to face Kalmir knows what alone. We didn't even have a proper send off for you. Because I was busy getting prepared for the trip. Whatever, I stowed away and now here I am. I even polished my armor. Okay, won't the city guard notice your absence? What? Wait, you stowed away? Won't the city guard notice your absence? What is a job compared to the safety of my very best childhood friend? You didn't think that far ahead, did you? No. Uh, anyway, I'm here for good now, even if I have to face horrible apparitions and nightmare-inducing monsters. That means a lot coming from you. And now that you're here, I'll make sure you work to earn your keep. <laughs> sure. Think of the food, Brigandine. Food beats monsters. Food beats monsters. I still need to contact the guide deep in the forest. Maybe the captain will be able to give me some pointers. 
Back at camp? Away from this damp forest full of stinky undead? I'm right behind you. Alright, so now we can return back to camp. We're back and alive to boot. That's a success in my book. So you've returned. Who is this? I came along as a stowaway. You know what? I don't want to hear about it. Forget it. Hey, uh, I mean, um, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> hey, scholar. Everything's being set up now. You maybe want to talk to the scribe and the cook. Get acquainted. Actually, we need to. Uh, 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 hold it. Don't want to hear it. I need to get a drink. Talk to the others and come see me. Ugh, that man is unbearable. Well, we should go ask the scribe about Cogni anyway. We can talk to the captain about continuing the expedition later. Ugh, do you really want to go back to that creepy forest? That's the whole reason why we are here, silly. Ugh, if we're going to go back in there, I'm going to need some food. I'm starving. We should go talk to the cook, too. Naturally, being well rested and in top shape is a great way for us to... So we can eat all the sweets. Right. Alright, so well, welcome to the camp. By visiting the scribe, you can decipher tomes and further improve your characters. And the cook has also set up shop, allowing you to acquire more powerful healing items. You can also get to know your allies and hear what they have to say throughout the journey. Also keep an eye out for useful items scattered around the environment. Alright, so I actually think that's probably a pretty good time to end this episode off here. If you'd like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. Highly recommended if you're into decision making and it actually affecting the story in meaningful ways. Uh, tactical combat, tactical turn-based combat, action point-based combat, and a, a, an intriguing story that, you know, that basically pits you up against all these... Yeah, nefarious denizens and goblins and undead and all kinds of things. So I, I'd highly recommend checking it out. And otherwise, I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.